give it to us. Show them why they should employ melanin. Why should they employ melanin? They want to know your secrets. They ask, why are you called Naomi Campbell Jr.? Show them. This is why. Because my highlight is Popinski and it's by Kemi. Kemi. <laughs> Elegance here, style and grace is not even enough to discuss. Show them who oh, you so are. Show them. Show them what you're worth. I'm from a place of class. I'm part of the bourgeoisie. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys! Hey y'all, hey, we are back again. Sorry for this slight delay. You know, sometimes <laughs> life happens. But let's not focus on that. Let's focus on the fact that we are back and we are here to give you some special talking. Because you know, we've got some dilemmas to answer. And we are also going to be doing a get ready with me, but using um, Primark products. Mm -hmm. So for, you know, Primark have been exploring some colour ranges for women of colour. So I thought, you know, Let's have a look at that. And also, um, we're going to be using some products from black owned companies. You know, you're supposed to be supporting each other, so we're doing it. The aim is to try and do a full face with um, as much private products as we possibly can. Dilemma number one Hi, girls. Plenty drama going on with me at the moment. Me and my husband are in our mid 20s, and my sister is 18. I got married this summer. <laughs> she wore black eye wrapper, so she's looking at me. Well done, you wore black. It said, look. This, does this look that like black? That looks very dark to me. But it said charcoal brown or something. Hey, now what's charcoal? Oh, what's it like? Crap. Mm. <laughs> I got married this summer. My husband is honestly a great husband. He loves me. He doesn't cheat. He's a man after God's heart. Wow. And the only time he comes home late is from that vigil. So <laughs> you're <That's> so funny. <laughs> <laughs> he has never given me any reason to doubt him. We do have our own issues, but they're they're not big and we always solve them and move on quite fast. My mum, whoa, started acting like she's jealous because we started planning our wedding. Problem number one. Jealous? She was always looking for reasons. Is that, is that unusual to you? Why should your, your mum is acting jealous? She still complains that she fainted in the wedding, which was a lie. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm sorry, but that's just what it is. Basically, I can't, I'm not gonna read all the stuff for the mum, but the mum is just think of mum, mum from hell. The summer after our wedding, my sister went to study in our town, which is a different country to our family home. My mum hated the idea, partly because she, she thought I would badly influence her sister. But the truth is, I just didn't want her to go through all I did with my mum, so she wanted her to come over to where she was. Um, she hadn't even started college, and my mum was already demanding her student finance. Whoa! <laughs> That's mad. So when she started living with us, Things were okay for like two weeks. She started having an attitude and not doing things. Asked her to yeah. each little sister. So then they sat her down and talked with her about things um, and said that she needed to change or she's gonna have to, have to go back to the mum's house. The next day she called the mum and said to the mum that they've been shouting at her. The and said, sister. Yeah, so that they haven't been feeding her. Hey. And, said, and they were like, how can they starve an 18 year old woman? Can you not cook? She also said, my husband tries to touch her and hug her until she pushes him away. My mum didn't tell me and told her not to tell me, but instead told the whole family. Jesus! Your mum so did what? Fam, <laughs> that's a madness. You didn't even come and tell me, you told the whole family. I didn't know until someone called me and warned me to send my sis home because they just saw a disturbing message. When I got home from work that day, I took her phone and behold, I saw the message. I asked her about it. She said very rudely that she's not talking about it because mummy told her not to. You should go back to your mum. Actually, go back home like, <laughs> and let her be collecting your student loan mm -hmm. because you can accumulate it here before like you can get lippy. Honestly, <laughs> I asked her to do it. Well, what you should do is you should tell your younger sister. I can't do anything unless I know the truth. Yeah. Mm. You can't tell me you're not going to talk about it. What What do you actually expect me to do if you're not going to talk about it? You expect me to believe it, but. Believe what? I haven't, I haven't been told anything. You have to ask your sister what happened. Ask your husband as well. Ask mm -hmm. her what happened, because at the end of the day, even if your sister doesn't want to cooperate, this is for your own livelihood, like your mm -hmm. own life. Imagine now you have a child with this man and this is the kind of things that he's capable of. Yeah, that's true. You need, to, you need to do as much investigation as you possibly can. Yeah. Keep keep calling her line until she answers. And you're not saying that you're um, Christian and stuff like that, so just pray. You need to pray. You guys need to be you praying, to pray. asking God, like, what should I do in this situation? Like, I need guidance, like, in this moment of confusion, you actually need to seek God. Because the Holy Spirit will, the, the rule that you will know. not even he hold back. Because you know. <laughs> that, that is real, that's a bunch of foolishness. Yeah. 
and even ask him as well like is there anything that you've done that she could be twisting like maybe is it like you're walking past her in the kitchen and like maybe your, your arm brushed her bum and maybe she jumped or something now she's turning it into something that it wasn't because she's lying because your sister doesn't seem to be very honest so <laughs> what happened? What happened? What happened? <laughs> Please. It's supposed to be looking like no, nah, don't no. Nah, I'm so sorry, guys. I can't actually, I can't actually um, agree with you. Look at that kind of what? It nah, looks like corn. Nah, it looks, looks like, like corn. Like, no, 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 guys, guys, guys. I'm sorry for. We're gonna have to stop that image right now. It looks like corn. I have corn here. Look, come on. It's not too far off. Come on, come on, come on, You know what? Come on, bro. It's got a pinky undertone. Come on, bro. No, 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 no. Bloody what? Pinky toes. So bloody what? Pinky toes. Pinky toes. I want to try it on my hand. Come on. That thing was no, so we in the camera it looks the same. I it looks the it. same. It looks the same. DPMO. It doesn't look the same. DPMO. I want you. Men are stupid. I don't even respect them. <laughs> <laughs> shake it, shake it, shake it, bum bum. I'm in a very serious dilemma and I don't know what to do. I've been talking slash seeing this boy for almost nine months and I really like him. I see a future beyond now with him, which is why I'm not in a hurry to have that girlfriend title. Plus I know that we're exclusive, so it doesn't matter to me that he hasn't asked me to be his girl. Since we've been talking, I had sex with someone else, but it was a one-off thing. And now this boy keeps texting me, telling me he wants me and will get me however he can. So tired you. God, look at his work. I haven't told the boy I'm talking to about this guy. And Uve asked, how long had you been talking to the act, the guy you actually like before you had sex with the other guy? How long was it? And then the girl said she'd been talking to the guy she liked for four months before she had sex with the other guy. So what should she do now? Nothing! You know that I can, I'm encouraging you to have sex. Can't lie, you're actually single. And the guy doesn't want to wife you. That's mistake number one. You can't be operating with no titles. This is a situation ship. If I was talking to a guy and we haven't got a title, but he starts having sex with somebody whilst I'm talking to you, and we're pretty much halfway through however long this has been. I'm not talking to you anymore. What, yeah. What, what are you saying now? That what she's doing is unacceptable? Yeah, it's unacceptable. But Zoe is saying that she's single, she should do her thing. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What is the purpose of you going to tell him now? Can you guarantee that he hasn't slept with anybody else in between? And man them, they'll be so fast to be like, oh, you're sleeping with another boy. Go and investigate your own. Yeah. I'm sure the guy is still talking to other girls. I just want to wife you. He's not ready to drop them holes for you, girl, because any guy that wants to take you seriously, he, we'll wouldn't, take you seriously. he wouldn't wait nine months. Okay, some people, okay. But by now, I'm sure he would know that you're the girl for him and he'll want to wife you. Yeah, but when I said I wanted to play enemies advocate, it was against what Zoe was saying because yeah. she said that she knows that they're exclusive. So, but were they exclusive at four months? They might not have been exclusive at four months. And how do you know that you're, you're exclusive? That's so why are you just together if you're exclusive? You're not seeing anybody else, but you don't want to make me your wifey. That's a violation. That's another situation. That's a different situation whether he should make her wifey or not. We should still advise her. He's <laughs> doing do, do wrong things with the girl. And you're feeling guilty because you're having sex. He doesn't want to... Uh, and he's not doing wrong things. She's calm with it. I'm saying she's calm with there not, there not being any titles because she said that she can see a future so she's not in any rush. She's, I can't, she's I can't playing lie. herself. It's, like it's delusions of grandeur. You're not, how can you be comfortable with Delusions it? of grandeur. <laughs> <laughs> the point is that she said she's calm but the fact that she doesn't have a title, she believes that they're exclusive and she slept with somebody else. Not her, even though that's not what she's asking about, that doesn't make sense. It's not saying that you should be upset but if you know you're gonna have a future, why no title? But well, you guys are talking about things that she's not concerned about. She needs to be That's concerned. What we're, we're, telling, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're shining light on your situation. She needs to be concerned. Girl, you're looking at the wrong, you're looking at the wrong thing, girl. If Easy. you believe that you are both in an exclusive relationship and that he isn't seeing anybody on the side, then I think you should tell him. That's, that's I do. It's the right thing to do if you believe that he is being faithful and you're both mutually exclusive is to tell him. And risk, yeah, the, risk, relation yeah, and risk the relationship yeah. being over. It's not your boyfriend. But it is, that's what she's saying. saying. But, but it's, not. it's not. Remember, and that's the hard I, 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 I know they don't have any titles. But you know what it's like? Whatever's your business is your business. You have no 
you don't have any rights to anything that I'm gonna tell you. Let's say you've been with uh, like you meet a guy and new fresh and he says to you, How many people have you slept with? You don't have to tell him pimp, that's your business, isn't it? Yeah, agreed. So, this this thing about you slept with another guy whilst you are a single woman. She's not single, she just told you she's not single. Bro, she's, she's got single. the damn title, she's single. He's single, and she, and she's single. And there will be I'm not I'm not saying that what they're saying is wrong, but I'm saying you guys aren't tailoring the advice based on what she said. Okay, okay, so in her mind, she's not really that single. Yeah. Okay, cool. So based on the fact that she's not really that single and he's not really that single, should she tell him? I think he deserves to know. This, this is me on a, on a, uh, <laughs> on a, I'm coming from the boy, I'm fighting the boy side and not your side anymore because I think what he did was trash. Yeah, well, it was trash. Um, so <laughs> from his perspective, if I was him, I would want to know so I can make the decision as to whether I'm going to stay with you or not. Yeah. If I'm trying to, fight your side and fight your angle then keep it to yourself yeah, yeah. keep it to yourself but at the end of the day the fact that you send this dilemma lets you know that it's probably irritating your conscience so it is mm. and it's just not, say it. it's not really nice Damn. so what's the conclusion per person okay seeing as we can't seem to agree on something uh my conclusion is that you're a man of a relationship you see me as well yeah man is probably out here doing things like you is your man really a man? Is the first question. Yeah. Um, is your man really is your, your man? man really a man? Is your babes really your, your babes? babes? So, like, yeah. That's that's the truth, and I can't lie. I agree with you, babe. Do your investigation. Find out if your man is really your man. <laughs> and if your man is your man, and you're his girl, and only girl, then I feel like your relationship should be built on trust, and therefore you should tell him. So my dilemma is, I've been speaking to a boy on and off for about three years with no title. Ah! Three <laughs> years! Situationship now! Yeah. You see oh, that? Oh, now! Oh, now! Oh, now! When they could have born a whole baby because they've born in that nine months. A whole it's baby! Now. A whole picking! A whole life! A whole pecking duck! Three years! Yeah. Anyway, he's one of them charismatic and funny Yoruba demons. Of, of your own mouth. Your own mouth. You? Your own mouth. You? <laughs> you know what? I'm even scared to go on. <laughs> what next? We've stopped speaking and started again for so many different reasons. Of course, in three One years. being the fact he was romantically sexually affiliated with my friend. Romantically whoa, whoa, whoa. sexually. <laughs> <laughs> While we were still talking, he's made me feel stupid and hurt so many times and I'll still be shining my teeth like he's done nothing wrong. The thing is, he only messages me when he feels like it, but when he calls me, he makes me feel so special, but it's rare for him to call. We've already, I've touched the problem here now. I do message him first too, but you know when you don't want to feel like you're annoying someone? I think I'm wasting my time. I've tried to cut him off, but I just can't, even when I'm with other boys. <laughs> you think? <laughs> even when I'm with other boys who are trying to lose me or whatever, I just compare them to him or think about What him. are you comparing? What are you, uh, anyway, all of my friends tell me to forget about him, and I try to because I know my worth, but you- What? <laughs> I'm going to and doing is two different things completely. Please help me. Baby girl, from time you actually can use the word you're a bad demon to describe a guy, you know very well that he should not be in your life. The guy is wasting your time. And the thing you said in the whole scenario about and when he calls you, even though it's rarely he makes you feel special, there's something in you that you don't like. Yeah. Like about yourself, like there's some kind of insecurity, you're not happy within yourself because there's no re reason why somebody can call you once in a blue moon and actually be making you feel satisfied with yourself. It's not correct, isn't it? Come on! <laughs> there was never fire! Oh, you know, it's Jesus. <laughs> you're saying that you know your worth. How can you know your worth? Your worth a guy disrespecting you, sleeping with your friend. Your friend. Making you feel stupid. A guy that has you confused. This guy is an ultimate shocky. Of course, he has you exactly where he wants you. He just dancing, shocking around, going up and down. Three good, blessed three years. years. Do you know that's a university degree? That's a university degree. Are you aware of that? What you are worth is more than this. You are someone that will give you your their time properly and not be disrespectful and not be doing all of this riffraff shakara behavior that this guy is doing. I feel like you need to go and discover who you are because then when you once you realize who you are, you'll realize what you're worth and you're like, this is not what you're worth and you won't accept any of this trash from this guy. Because he is T R to the A S H trash <laughs> with an exclamation mark. Underline, bold, turn it to red, red coloured font and, and highlight it. Hmm. I feel like you're you're looking for something. Mm -hmm. Preach it from him that he can't provide you with. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe you you always listen. I'm always telling people you have to find the root. 
Because when you don't know the root, mm -hmm. you're trying to address everything else, but unless you pull a weed mm -hmm. from the root, it will always grow back. This guy, he's in your life to fulfill something, to complete something, to make something seem okay, but there is something wrong, you need to find out what that is. It could possibly be maybe your a parent isn't in your life, or a parent didn't treat you right, or somebody else has broken your heart, or so there's some there's some kind of rejection, that's the key mm. word. There's some kind of rejection, some kind of heartbreak that has possibly taken place. And this guy is not gonna mend your heart. No, could you? He's only going to continue to uh, add salt to the wounds that are already there. And perpetuate a dysfunctional cycle. So baby girl, you've got to dead this one. You have too Absolutely many examples dead it. Dead it. of how this ends. It never ends well. It never ends Ever. well. He'll go and marry somebody who he who he thinks has self-worth. Who, who, exactly. yeah, who reflects Honestly, that's exactly what, what he mean. thinks a woman should be a like. A woman should be like. And at the end of the day, when you allow people to treat you like a second option, that's all you will become. We always say you have to train people how to train. treat you. Yeah, you have to train people. everyone in your life how to treat you. You have to train your parents. Your parents. How to treat you. Those you have to train your friends and people in a relationship. These are my boundaries. And if you cross them, there will be consequences. Mm. These are the things that I will allow you to do to me. And there was a really good meme that I saw, which said that we only allow people to treat us as bad as we treat ourselves. Mm. So this is a reflection. The way you're allowing him to neglect you, Mm -hmm. that like not show you proper love not not give you the not like affirm your affirm worth mm. is the same way how you neglect yourself so basically girl manage to leave him please yeah. i yeah. manage yeah. we know it's difficult with that we really understand that this stuff is hard particularly when you be with someone same for person three for years. three years part of you trying to move towards understanding your worth move from this guy so you have the freedom to truly discover what you are worth. All I'll say is learn to respect yourself or no man will ever respect you. Yeah, I'll leave that there. Okay, next video, man. Hey guys, first of all, love from the US. Keep doing you, you're amazing. Thank you, sis. Thank, Thank you, girl. sis. <laughs> Me and my boo. Yeah. <laughs> now. I've for a year now. I've <laughs> <too much. laughs> never been a relationship type of girl, but honestly, he holds it down. He knows me better than I know myself, and no man, nobody, period, has ever made me so happy. You go, girl. The only issue we have is that he went in jail for a couple of months. Anyway, what I wanted to ask <laughs> 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 uh, Yeah, this is like 10%, 0.1% coverage. No, yeah, it's really, you really have to be throwing this thing on. Yeah, Probably yeah, I should have. scream. Keep playing. <laughs> It does look great, right? It's great. Yeah, it's great. See, we still friend and all. Oh my god. Just stop. We, <laughs> we, you know, we still friends, but they be talking mad shit about me and him. I really love this boy. I really love this boy, but I do value my friends as it's been a as it's been a long-term friendship. But this is like the only trouble we've ever had. Should I leave my man to appease my friends or do I carry on being happy? I don't understand that option. What? I don't understand how you you love your man so much and your man is being so fantastic to mm. you and he's so important, he's so great, but you think it's an option to leave, to leave him. him. That I'm, that I've never, people are going through tumultuous relationships with tumultuous type of guys. But do you know, yeah, I see But they won't leave somebody for that. No. Talk us of this, that, this, so good. And you will leave him. Something's not right. Oh, so what I've got from what Uwe just said is that you're not saying, I don't think you're saying, necessarily saying the whole situation. I think if all of your friends are quote unquote hating on him, there's something Probably to hate on. Probably a reason why. Hey, yeah. And there's perhaps, a reason why. perhaps because of the love, you can't really see it or you're refusing to see it. Um, I wouldn't, I would never say that you should leave your man if he is genuinely good to you mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of your friends but i can't see how all of your friends yeah yeah are hating friend. on this one guy if this guy is doing anything that you think okay maybe this is why they say i should leave him actually think to yourself is this worth leaving somebody would you advise anybody would you advise your sister to stay in a relationship with such a person if no then leave 
Sophie says, how do I step out of my comfort zone when it comes to talking to new people? Boys in particular. I seem to get really shy and retreat even though my closest friends know I'm nothing like that. What would you advise what would your advice be to someone who wanted to develop social skills and become more confident socially? So she wants to know how to step out of a comfort zone and talk to new people, particularly boys. Well, how should she approach new people? Well, I believe I have an element of social anxiety. These guys don't believe me, but it is what it is. How I kind of overcome that is I try to really understand the benefits of what socializing will do for me in this particular moment or time or what the benefits of coming out of my shell will be at this particular moment. so i kind of like get myself into a character of who i want to be and i play that character if that makes sense Very well. so i don't i'm not i'm not myself if that makes sense i'm not embodying that kind of feeling of anxiety i'm embodying who i would like to be in that particular moment in time if that makes sense and I was pretty good at drama, so that's worked for me thus far. How do you make new friends, Abby? I force it. Yeah, just just like speak. I, I like for me personally, <laughs> like it's like a survival skill. Like when I came to university, and I look at people, I target Livia. Yeah, yeah. wait. I saw her. I, I don't even know why. I, she really came at me. Yeah, like, <laughs> I thought her energy was good. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna to be a friend. That's all. I make the decision here. Like, literally, I wait your thought process. I have no friends. I came to university alone. I don't know anybody. That girl over there, she looks friendly. I'm going to be her friend. That's literally my friend. She came at me like. <laughs> and like so, she was coming through the between and, the t tables. And so who are, I know like I just can start talking to somebody. I know that I, I have good energy in it, so I can. I don't think people. It's not like I'll be like, oh my god, like hi, like yeah. I'm not. I'm not like, She's I'm not a creep. I'm not a creep, so I know I can just start talking to somebody and then. I see how it goes, innit? I said, I'm not, I'm not going to be a loner here. Like, I made the decision that I'm going to survive and I'm going to have friends. And that's what I've done. It might not be that simple. And I guess if you're out and like, you want to speak to guys, I don't, really, I don't think you really need to speak to guys. The waste of your time. I can't lie to you. Yeah, weird. I was going to say, I, I, was, I, don't, <laughs> I don't have advice for speaking to guys because I don't have any experience in that. I, I don't move to Amanda in it, so that's not really my what, what I do. And the, no, but she said just as a friendly tip. Oh, it? just, as, oh, a, just friendly. as a friendly tip. Then my advice still goes like literally. But really, what's the friendliness about? <laughs> be honest. Be honest, girl. You want to be friendly so you can be approachable. Come on, girl. Let's be honest with each other here. Yeah. Like really, really. Like when did you want to be friendly so boys would be your friend? Reality. It's only if they're part of squad that I want to be their friend. Otherwise, I don't care. And even then, like you just let it happen organically yeah. because you know that like, you know. I think it's important to realise that these people are, ev everyone is a human being just like you. Nobody mm. is bigger or no better than you. And with that mentality, you might mm -hmm. find it easier to approach people. Okay, so here's another very similar one. I'm just going to add it in to see as we're here. I'm 23 years old. I've never talked to a boy properly. I'm not sure why, but I have the feeling that boys are afraid to talk to me. I really don't know. This is weird. Are you the one that's going to answer this or? Yeah, honestly. <laughs> but everyone doesn't want people. Why do people sound like me? Anyway, I'm not sure why, but I have the feeling that boys are afraid to talk to me. I really don't know. My friends around me know I face the problem. They are often addressed by men and they are even young, younger. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong here. Sometimes it's very discouraging. It's not like oh, I want hey. a bay or something, but I just want to get some guys. Yeah, sometimes the attention is nice. It's not like I want a bay or something, but I just want to get to know some guys without any intentions to build a relationship. Um, do you have any tips <laughs> for me? What I can do about that and some tips on how to talk to guys normally. They're just, they're human beings. They are just human beings. Like, I understand we have like differences in regards to what we want to speak about, mm -hmm. but when you take the fact that they're, they're flesh and blood just like you and not put them on a pedestal that like they are some kind of super creatures that, yeah. that will automatically reduce some of the stress and anxiety that comes to talking to male. Also, what do you want to call it? You said that you don't know, you haven't talked to a boy properly, you're 23 years old. I just feel like some people are not actually supposed to go mm. through life talking to, um, not even, not disrespectful way, numerous guys. Some people it's just not what we are called to in life. I'm not called to that in life. There's so many reasons why that could be. Number one, okay, let's say, um, 
God is protecting you mm -hmm. from going through a bunch of situations with a bunch of different guys so that you're not heartbroken and it's not going to be too difficult for you to be in the relationship that you're supposed to be in number one that's one reason number two another reason could be actually you know, it's all the same reason it's just to protect your protect heart you. at the end of the day anyway hey queen okay so my friends and i started going to see this particular person who we always conveniently saw on route home that's from true. school we would buy food there make conversation and this man quote unquote, he owned a shop, would ask us normal questions about school. My friends noticed that if we went there near to closing time, he would give out free food so that it wouldn't go to waste. Now, every now and again, he would say some things that may be considered slightly creepy. He joked about giving us some alcohol and when we went to get some food one night, he joked about a particular asset on her body, fat ass. At that time, she was eating some sorbet and he asked her why she was eating it so seductively. Whoa. I don't think I need to say what ethnicity this guy is, but let's just say you call him boss man. <laughs> <laughs> and when we all went back there after school the next day, he jokingly asked her about the state of her hangover. When we went there after school, there was almost always four of us, but he was more likely to say what he really wanted to if there was only two of us. He would ask us how much we've done intimately. He would ask us how old we would go for, how old we were, say that I'm not as old as you think I am. Once he told us he was 27, but at a later date, he said he was 21. He said he was 23 and 21 at another separate date. Now, as we were walking home about five days ago, we noticed that the shop had been sold and we already know that he doesn't live in the area. So one of us took the phone of one of the two girls he favored and continued a conversation he had initiated. Here it is. Test, 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 uh, test, test, bro. <laughs> we can put the receipt in as well because- Said how many boyfriends you had? She said, I don't kiss and tell. He said, lol, really? Then he said, lol, next you're gonna say you wanted to kiss me. He. Then the girl said, maybe I did. Then he goes, lol, then you're maybe, gonna maybe, say maybe. you wanted to drag me into bed, lol. Those are the things, bruv. This whole thing is a mess, man. <laughs> I, I don't, don't even understand what's going on. For me, personally, like, if you know the guy is a bit creepy, why, why are you guys still saying this? From time he started mentioning you lot's body parts and things like that and making certain comments. Why are you still at the shop? Why are you still at the shop? And either way, like, you guys sound like you're young. Like, maybe I'm still in secondary, secondary school, school. Maybe 14, 15. Mm -hmm. if, for me, when I was 14, a guy's 21 talking to me. I'm actually scared. Yeah, really. I'm I'm fearing for my existence. I like, how like you're a grown man. I'm you're a grown scared. man. Now I was. I was but this one is not really 21. They believe he's probably older than 21. Yeah. 27. You think someone calling you fat? I tell you, you have fat ass. I'm trying to feed you food. You won't be thinking something. If you're if you're in school, and you think the guy's a ping ting boom ting, and the rest of your friends think he's a ping ting boom ting, and he's 27. No, you. And he's sure. talking to you. 27, well, okay, well, if they don't believe he's 27, but if he was, if they believe he's 27, yeah, then that's creepy, but this guy is not even like, like you can tell he's an uncle. He's an uncle. Yeah. He's an uncle. He's an uncle. Yes, like, you guys have no business speaking to this man ever no, again. No, no. ever. There's, there's nothing he can do. He hasn't, even, he's made sexual conversation with you. He hasn't done anything with you guys if you're under 16. I don't even know if there's grounds for any kind of criminal charges to be telling you guys to call the police. But as young people, you should be protecting yourselves, exert wisdom in this situation. Yeah. You don't need to be speaking to him block him, end the conversation. He said he's 21, then he's 27. How old, how old is he really? Probably like 35. With a family. With a family probably. This guy has problems. Doesn't need to be speaking to you guys. Protect yourselves and just lock everything off. You guys don't seem to understand that this could potentially be a dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. Like he could, he could see you out in the street one time but then try to make advances towards you guys just because of an well, over friendly, of, yeah, definitely. Of, of an entertaining and over friendly demeanor. Mm. So, like, block him on everything and don't entertain any more conversation with the guy. Definitely, yeah. it's it's not safe. This guy is pretty much a, most likely a predator, and especially he's very calculated in the sense that he won't say what he knows is problematic Around amongst a lot of people. Mm. Because how predators are, they try to target the people who they think are the weakest mm. links, mm. the people who think will allow them to get away with their, you know predatory behavior so mm. therefore he's not gonna operate in his full capacity when there's a large group of you yeah. where he can't control the situation and can't control the narrative of the story so you guys need to be aware that this guy is not a good guy mm. and lock it off it's not a game it's not bants yeah i can't like to the point that i can say this is disappointing like i'm not sure how mm. your parents would feel about this i know that my parents my mum wouldn't be proud of me for this sort of behavior yeah. like, 
Lock it off, guys. We exact wisdom. We can't condone this behavior at all. It's, it's actually not funny. It's not funny. It's not funny. It's Your big sisters have spoken. Stop that nonsense. I'm in my first year of university and I've had, I've never had a boyfriend before because I never wanted to settle down. But I have met someone who is everything I've always wanted. He likes me so much. We are so open to each other. I don't know if I'm ready, but I don't want to lose him either. I then message her back saying, what makes you question if you're ready to settle down? And she says, I don't know if I'm ready for a relationship in uni. I don't want to be distracted. Follow your instincts. Funny, right? <laughs> like, you know sometimes you, you're honest with yourself and then this, I feel like your sense right now is really functioning at its highest capacity. If you know your degree is important to you and you know that I've met a guy, I really like him but he's going to distract me, you do not want to run the risk of affecting your grade and then what could happen as a result is you could end up resenting the guy. And maybe it's because you know your time management skills aren't good and you're going to get head over heels with the guy and it's just going to be a bad situation for you. Mm -hmm. So if you actually genuinely know, this is going to be a distraction for me, say to the guy, like, I know things are getting serious, but can we just kind of like keep things as they are until we finish you? I don't know how long that is for you. If it's only to like sit the next six months and he respects you and he really likes you, then he will do that for you. I don't think so. I think you won't be the first, you won't be the last of people who will be in university and have been in a relationship. I feel like if you really want something to, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what Zoe saw today. <laughs> if you want something to work, you will find a way to make it work. Another thing to add is like, you're saying that, um, would you tell your daughter that information? I would tell my daughter to stay out of the relationship because I'm your mom and I want you to get the best so, of your... So, are you because, girl by the best no, because, because I feel like there's certain advice that you'll get from certain people, like your parents should tell you. Like, stick in school, mm -hmm. no okay. boys, focus well, completely on looking but... Subscribers like sisters, what would you tell your sister? Me personally, in this point, I feel like the issue isn't the fact that you feel like you're... It's going to distract your work. I don't feel like that's the main issue. You have an issue with commitment. Yeah. Evidently, mm -hmm. because you haven't wanted to settle down and you have a fear of committing. So it's very easy for you to say, well, I feel like this is going to distract my work, etc. That's not the main issue at hand here. You just don't want to commit. And you're scared that your issues with commitment are going to make, are going to drive him away, which is true. So if you really want to make it work, at least give it a try. You're not the first thing, you're not the last of people who will be in a relationship and be at uni at the same time. If you really want to make something work, you will. And if it genuinely is a distraction to your work, then then yeah, then I guess you just have to let, let the relationship die. I don't think if you if you haven't tried at all, then I don't think you're doing what you seem to be like, what you think to be potential for something more, any justice. This is an opportunity to work on your time management skills. It is difficult. There's been multiple times in university where I had to look off talking to somebody or give this person strict hours like, like that. So I think it's based off of what Beverly said. If you are gonna decide to um, pursue a relationship with him or allow him to pursue a relationship with you, whatever, and you're scared of being distracted, just put boundaries in place. That's just the most important thing. Yeah. Um, and not just put boundaries in place, stick to stick them. Yeah. Figure out what the main issues are. You need time to obviously focus on your books and stuff like that. So then say, at this time, like Baby said, you can't talk to me. I said, after 10 p.m., don't call me. Don't call my phone because I'm not picking up. And even if you're thinking now, like, oh, it's true, mate, I do have issues of commitment, tell the guy that as well. No point keeping it from him. You'll be surprised how these guys can give you another perspective. As ladies, we, we tend to conjure up full kind of, assess a whole situation in your head for both sides, not knowing that the person in question could have a valuable opinion or have a valuable solution. Education first. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, I'm sorry for the, the footage that we need. Show them how they should employ melanin. Like, well, you need to have you like, as a creative director. Deny Naomi Campbell. Who is that? Who is, who is me? I'm not Naomi Campbell. Show them. Fuck to you. Show them how special you are. Now, the fact you were saying that we're black, oh, let's start with that. Um, I got these lashes. 
we both got these lashes um, and they're from a company called Vashes. And so the lashes that I have are actually the ones that were sent to Beverly, but um, I like the texture. Um, a lot, so I stole them from Beverly. And I actually pulled some from this eyelash if you wonder why it looks a bit funky. But these are life. When I wear them on Snapchat, people were asking me, well, where are those from, where are those from? Like, I actually love these lashes, but I would keep buying these lashes. Zoe? Are you right? I just wanted to see <laughs> what's going on. Okay, so I got the Kim, and the Kim are like wispy, long lashes. And I absolutely love them. Like every time I wear them, everyone's always like, oh my God, where did you get them from? They're so nice. And I literally are so nice. This is actually my second pair of these. Like I bought an extra pair. Like I already like run the other one was like ragged and on holiday. They're so nice. I actually got them wet. So they're slightly straighter than um, usual. Usual, more the, slightly more, more of a kill, you know? But they're really honestly just so nice. These are dope. Really, yeah. really good yeah. quality and lashes. And you get like, lots and lots of wears out of them as well it's not like oh five pairs and the lashes ruined no mm. i banged these that 20 plus and so it wasn't really like this kind of lash wearer you didn't really no. do these lips mm -hmm. but this one i think like yeah it's really yeah. taking yeah. her to those mm. places yeah. Yeah. yeah you know what it's because, it's because i was so jealous i wanted these ones <laughs> and this must be chloe that is actually on my eyes and the other ones over there were china yeah. Oh, so who do you have on? Oh, so I got these Primark. Girl, tell me the Primark lashes. Eyelashes because Chloe ones. You got Chloe oh, ones. I stole Chloe's. Yeah, so. she stole my ones, which were Chloe, because they're just too much for me. I would I would prefer Zoe's ones. Our beautiful Kemi sent us some of her product line. Yeah, so no, let's, let's really get into this. She does this highlighter. My highlighter is called Honey Dream. We got the Nubian Glow okay. for Nubian Queen. Okay. Yo. So I went to so go for the more champagne and that's what I got. I got champagne. I don't even like highlighters. Like that is not my life. That is not my tease. But I put on this highlighter and I was pleasantly surprised. You see, she has some finely milled. <laughs> type of texture, not that grainy glitter. No, this is a highlighter and you can layer it up and be giving you popping mm. skin. I'm gonna keep putting it on because I know I haven't got enough for you to understand what's going on. But look at Beverly, take it in. Zoe as well, Zoe has the same color. Listen, this one you wanna go for that Nubian. Do you want Nubian? You know, so that we need to purchase. When you honey. say bye to them, chalkies, they're <laughs> blinded not only by the light of Jesus shining in your life, but by, by the, the highlight. You see highlight. The, the good girl. thing about this highlight, yeah, is if I tell you how potent the highlight is, guys, yeah, yeah, I will yeah. be using this highlight till the day I die. Honestly, this one pot for the rest of my living days. Honestly, to you, all I've been using is the lid. Is the lid. The lid. I haven't even touched this thing. <laughs> All I have been using is the lid. I have not once in my life topped this thing up. You yeah, just need just a tiny, tiny bit. It goes so far, ladies. And it's really nice to have a thing that's buildable, not like you put one yes, on your face. Yes, and that's it. Fam. I want you guys to know that we've actually had these products for since like February. So we have really, really tried these products. With I'm Moolah. Big one thing, I can't say that you can use every single product of Primark to do a whole face, but there are some products that you can use and you can add to your yeah. staples. So I used a combination. I um, was using my own concealer. I went to Primark today. I couldn't find my concealer. They had literally porcelain, white of white, and they had dark espresso. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do with any of the colours. So I opted out and just bought rich espresso and use it for my console color i actually really really like this um and it was 90 pennies yeah it's 90 pennies, 90 pennies. can you believe this yeah. it's a my perfect color <coughs> sorry excuse me concealer stick full coverage natural finish 90 pennies 90 pennies excellent vibe i would recommend this to anyone for contour now let's get down to this foundation i mean <laughs> Talk about crap. I'm so sorry. You don't want to start doing using this channel. <laughs> <laughs> For three pounds, you can't talk about crap. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, like as Beverly was describing, it was looking green. And as we For them, me, it was grey. For me, it was just like yellow, fluorescent yellow. But it blended in, like everyone's actually looking decent. But it's like, it's cracking underneath. Cracking. The makeup. Cracking. The, this, it's not sitting chamfer. This thing will not, not give any I use um, my perfect colour for honey. Medium coverage, semi matte finish, vitamin E. <coughs> this is 
this is medium full, this is not medium. I would say this is light coverage, not medium. Maybe it is medium coverage, but this isn't very buildable. It doesn't mm. layer well. That's problematic. Who wants a foundation you can't layer? That's useless. And then it gives me a great tone. And like Zoe said, the thing is just cracking, 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 cracking. Looking atrocious, mate. Anyway, that's that. This one was £2.50. Yeah, mine was £2. And I, I refuse to say you get what you pay for because they're, remember Elf back in the day, they were mm. charging stupid cheap prices and the products were decent. The concealer that we had was flipping toffee. Listen, you know what? You guys saw what it looked like when I first put it on in it. It was a joke thing, but look at me now. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> perhaps it wasn't as much of a bad purchase as we thought. What I think with this- Would you use this again? <laughs> I didn't use it, but look, you have to look at the results. Okay. You can't call the results. When I, I put the foundation on and it was when I put this on it looked really white, but as I was blending it, it was mixing with the foundation. When you kind of like put it on your skin, the whiteness isn't what it is because it actually mixes with your foundation because it's not like you said buildable. Aside from what Beverly's saying, I think this is a terrible, terrible, terrible product. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. <laughs> because if you're someone that doesn't wear foundation, you can never use this. You can't use this as yeah, someone that's our complexion and use this because yeah. there's nothing for it to mix with. You're just mm. gonna have this chalk on your face. <laughs> that's atrocious. On top of that, I don't know who's to blame, whether it's the foundation or the concealer for the fact that my whole under eye, you can see every single crevice, <laughs> every single under eyes look like I'm born in 1940s. Oh, yay. I never really noticed that. Now you said it, I was like, yeah, that's that's quite a late name. <laughs> this is what I call decoration. Yeah. It's just decoration. It's not very it's just, it's just superficial. Yeah. It's not doing what it's designed to do. For four pounds, this is a waste of bloody money. Okay? I've got this eyeshadow palette called I've got eyeshadows. Mystic. Yes. You still can't see it. Okay, there. Um it was two pounds fifty. I actually think it's quite good. All these frame frame colours like this pink here and this no, that's not gonna do much. But this glittery one here, and even this um, black and pinky glittery one, very pigmented, looking bright. Actually a good buy. Cool. So this is the bronze sun kiss shadow and shade. So these are the kind of shades you get in them. Though they look so fancy. I think I used this like gold one. I liked it, it spread quite well. And for four pounds, let me even quickly talk oh, yeah, about yeah, the yeah, contour sure. that I used. It was the foundation, it was rich espresso. It doesn't blend well. <laughs> oh, I used to say, oh, it doesn't blend. the concealer. Yeah, I, I used the that. foundation, it doesn't blend well. I wish I would have used the concealer because it was very thick and it wasn't moving. But I do like the color, like she said, it's warm. Yeah, it gives warm. brightness. It's, I think it's nicer than the sleek one. It was decent. I used the single, okay? It's cranberry in hair. And the color payoff was fantastic. I also chose to get some lip colors. So I got this mm, super matte liquid lipstick. It's like a, a mauve, mm, a mm, mauve nude. Mm -hmm. Kind of lip gloss is in the Saint or Sinner range and it's called Shadow Me. I used um, this medium brown eyebrow pencil to line my lips. Whether it's good or not, it's a bit thick. It doesn't feel light. Bear in mind, I have used multiple layers of this, so I think it was, it's decent for the price. I have used a PS Pro Kiss Proof Liquid Matte Lipstick. Kiss Proof. Yeah. Um, if you know me, what is life without gloss? So, Primark or no Primark, I had to add the Hair Shop gloss on top. I feel like it's giving me my, re my regular look. I feel like the li matte lipstick is, is doing pretty well. I'll give them a seven out of 10. <laughs> Yeah, the lips, 7 out of 10, definitely. I really like this lip gloss. Mine's called the Perfect Nude Nourishing Lip Gloss in the colour Caramel Kiss. I really like it. I line my lips with my eyebrow pencil and I use the lip gloss on top. And that's it. And it's really good. Nice shine. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a nice, nice colour. Yeah, it's nice on you. They've done the, the thing with this. They're all like under £3. And I think we can say the best part of the yeah, it's too fancy. range they offer is their lip it's selection because they have so many colours. Yes, guys, we are here today and we are giving you goddesses. This is so funny. I <laughs> <laughs> love to laugh. I love fell, baby. 